Now it's time to check in with Keith and find out what you have been sending in to our My Two Cents at TBN.TV mailbox. Keith, did anybody write in this week with a oh, question? Oh, we've got some nice ones. First of all, from our buddy Fuzzy Don. He Fuzzy asked Don. when the investigation <laughs> was in progress, the people he questioned were probably already working in the government and receiving a salary. So what did Robert Mueller use the $30 million plus he spent for? Boy, that's a great question. And I think Congress ought to insist on a total audit of the $30 plus million plus that Robert Mueller used just to find out that the whole thing of Russian collusion was totally false. A lot of your money went to that investigation and it proved nothing other than some people in Congress were full of it. That's what it proved. And you know what? We didn't need to spend the money. We already knew that they were full of it. There you go. What else you got, Keith? Well, let's go to Long Island. Molly says, what is happening in New York City? It's turning into the real version of the post-apocalyptic movie with Kurt Russell. The mayor guts the policing budget by a billion dollars. Robberies go up 286% in a single neighborhood. Shootings are rising uncontrollably. And the wealthy are leaving the city in droves. Now, Mayor de Basio calls for federal help when he turned it down in the past. Is there any recourse for citizens there? You bet there is. It's called moving. Get a U-Haul. Load up your stuff and get out of there while you can. You know, I call him Mayor de Blabio. But here's a guy who thought that somehow crime would go down if he got rid of a billion dollars worth of his police force. Now, anybody who is that dumb doesn't need to be the mayor of one of the most important cities in the world. So the question is, what can you do? I'm telling you, if you're there... Try not to be the last one who leaves and has to turn out the lights. That's what I suggest you do. Well, Doug at Hotmail is concerned. Bill Gates says he will, we will have to take the coronavirus vaccine. He's not a doctor, and the vaccine's not fully tested and ready yet. How does he know so much? He's a computer programmer. Yeah, you know, if Bill Gates really wants to fix a virus, why does he start with Windows 10? That thing is full of viruses, right? You ever had a Microsoft product that didn't have a virus and didn't have to be vaccinated from something and you had to pay them handsomely for? Thank you, Dr. Gates, but we will wait and see when the best solution is for the coronavirus. We appreciate all your concerns. In the meantime, fix your software. What else you got, Keith? Well, George from Sierra Vista, Arizona. Dear Governor Huckabee, thank you for your many years of service as a politician and a Christian leader. As a lifetime conservative Democrat, I write to tell you that while I do not support the far left and the Democratic Party, I cannot shift to the GOP under Donald Trump's leadership. I have favored a balanced budget, secure borders, and trade policies that stimulate American businesses and employment. However, as a practicing Christian, I cannot support President Trump's hyperbolic twisting of the truth and his slipshod interpretation of the Constitution. Moreover, his leadership during the current, uh, current pandemic has been dangerously inadequate. Well, you know, here's what I would say to you. First of all, um, you don't have to like President Trump. You really don't. You don't have to agree with his uh, language or his tweets or any of that stuff. You're not voting on personalities. You're voting on policies. And if you are a more conservative Democrat, if you're pro-life, you've got nowhere else to go. If you uh, support Israel, if you believe in lower taxes, if you believe in border security, if you believe in the rule of law and not the rule of mobs, those are some things that will make you have to perhaps hold your nose because you don't like Donald Trump. But those are the policies that he's going to implement and nobody else will. So I hope you understand. This is not a, a, an election for miscongeniality. It's an election for a leader. And look at what the leader does, not so much the manner in which the leader says things, because that will cause you to miss some real leadership to get things done from a policy perspective that can be great for America. Okay, Keith, you got any others? Well, one more. Tim Murph on Gmail sends this question. If Joe Biden claims he's going to select a woman of color as his vice presidential nominee, 
Is he not subject to the laws against selection based on race and gender? Is this racist or sexist by PC standards? You know, you make too much sense. That's why, that's why you sent that question in. And I wonder if anybody else is catching it that way. Because if you say, I'm very open-minded, I believe in diversity, but the only people that even get on my list are people who meet these very narrow criteria, you kind of have decided that you're not going to be so diverse after all. Boy, that was a great observation. I hope more Americans see it for what it is, a brilliant assessment. Now, if you want more videos like that one, hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell right next to it. And if you leave a comment, positive or negative, I'll be sure that my dog Toby sees it and responds to you in kind. <laughs>